Hey, Tyrone, yeah. um, obviously you were in the midst of uh, Sunday night's um, unfortunate incident, uh, but you were in another hotel. What was the atmosphere like during, or when you guys found out, what was actually taking place? Uh, you know, it was, it was very kind of surreal. We were uh, at the Luxor Hotel watching the Blue Man Group perform, and uh, Luxor, Luxor Hotel is directly adjacent to the Mandalay Bay um, and, uh, you know, essentially right there in the mix of the of the carnage uh, that was going on at the concert. So, um, you know, the show came to its natural conclusion, I believe, at around 11 p.m., and they had the music playing for a little bit, and um, then an announcement came over the intercom system that said, due to an emergency at the Logan Hotel, please, uh, the hotel is going into lockdown. And we thought it was part of the show at first, the first time we made the announcement. But then, it, you know, a few minutes passed, and we realized, okay, this isn't part of the show. And so uh, I hopped on my phone and started just Googling and looking at social media and read the tweet uh, that there was an active shooter uh, on the Las Vegas Strip and at the Mandalay Bay. And I was thinking, that's directly across from where we are right now. And uh, I started, to, I shared it with my girlfriend, and then I pulled up a video. There's like a video that's gone viral now that's, uh, you know, people running through the crowd and um, someone using a truck to get someone out of there. Um, showed that video to my girlfriend and to some of the other uh, folks that were there to see the show around me. And you can start hearing the whispers. People are starting to talk one more, and you kind of feel like, got the feeling that everyone was kind of finding out because the hotel wasn't telling us anything. Um, they, the people, the staff that was inside, and probably because they weren't getting any information as well, kept saying, you know, we don't know what's going on, we're just in lockdown, we don't, we don't know what's going on. And by the time they actually told us, everyone knew, because everyone had been on their phones and um, knew the status of just about everything as the events unfolded. Well, we all know the aftermath of what took place, 59 people dead, over 500 injured, but you then left. Uh, the area yesterday. What was the atmosphere like at the at the uh, airport and heading to the airport because the place was kind of still in a no go area for just general public. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was really it's eerily quiet for for Las Vegas. You know, this is my this is my first time going to Las Vegas, but every you know TV show or movie or music video that you've ever seen, it's just alive. It's just just bubbling over with life at, at all times and you know after the show we walked we had to walk back from the Luxor to the Aria Hotel which is about a mile um, away and um, there were obviously no taxi cabs no Ubers and we we had to walk and it was just a ghost town there was nobody on the streets but police some in tactical gear everyone armed and on the alert and no cars and no tourists and, you know, on the way to the airport, it was a little, there was no traffic hardly. Um, and, you know, we got, I, I believe they bumped up our flight as well because they had so many delays or cancellations from the evening before. Uh, so they moved our flight up to get more flights out of there to get people out of Las Vegas. And and the pilots, you know, made an announcement, you know, kind of, a, you know, our hearts go out to all those affected. And I, I want to say I think we did have at least a few people on our flight that were at that concert because you can kind of, there was one gentleman in a wheelchair uh, who didn't look like he was normally in a wheelchair. There was two young ladies that the flight attendants insisted these two have to stay together. We cannot separate them. They've been through too much. Uh, so, you know, there were definitely some people on our flight that had been there too. When when you find out what's going on and how close you are to uh as, as bad as things were next door, what goes through one's mind? I mean, you've been on the world stage competing at the Olympics, at, at world championships, but you take sports out of it because now this is this is real life. This is life or death. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I, some people know, some people don't, that you know, my first kind of lifelong dream was to, to be a, a military fighter pilot. And uh, so when I went to university, it was on scholarship, the United States Air Force scholarship. So uh, when I did the junior ROTC in high school and the ROTC in college and they, they teach you a lot about situational awareness and, and things like that and you know you, you're being taught these things but I was never asked to put them into practice obviously I did not go into the military so when when everything started going off and I started reading everything immediately I just started thinking okay where are the exits 
where is every, where are all these people going to run? Where's, what's human nature going to do? And where do we need to go to ensure our survival? So I was just, my head automatically starts thinking about those things. And I was thinking, how can I get myself and my girlfriend in safety? How can I keep us away from the crowd? Because that's the easiest target. And where can we go to stay alive? So, you know, I guess maybe pressure thinking, maybe some of that does come from sports. Some of it obviously probably comes from the military small military background that I have, and, uh, but that's it. I just started thinking of solutions um, and not to just get lulled into a sense of safety just because we were inside of a room because um, no one really knew what the scale of, of the uh, attack was and if there would be more or if there were more people. So, um, so yeah. No, you've you've gone back and now you're on your way to work as people can hear. Um, how do you switch on, switch off? Because you've been through a traumatic thing, although you weren't directly involved, you were so close that one would say um, you've actually witnessed because you've been through the area of mass destruction of, of sorts. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I got back to Houston last night and I woke up this morning really tired, not really feeling like doing anything, and I just said, I mean, I can't get out of my routine. So I, I went to the track, I went to training, went home and got showered and came on my way to work and I just wanted to, you know, can't, we can't let life stop. Um, we all have so many things that we're responsible for or that we want to accomplish. And if we, you know, if we stop, then then they win, you know, they being anyone who do us harm or affect our way of life. So, um, I don't know, I just kind of have to. Uh, because you can be, you can sit there and watch CNN all day long and, and wait for more updates. And, but at the end of the day, we still have our lives to live. And um, the only way, we, only thing we can do to honor those who have passed is to live life to, to its fullest. And that's a, that's the best way that we can honor those who lost their lives. Well, Tyrone, this is not the first time you've been this close to an incident. A huge day of celebration for uh, for the French and. Some lunatic drives a semi truck through a crowd of people, families there to watch the fireworks and enjoy a good time. And I was watching those fireworks from the roof of the hotel, and someone was doing that, you know, that heinous act at the exact same time. Um, and the next day we had to go out and compete. And um, I would lie, I would be lying if I said my mind wasn't a bit distracted. Um, I mean, being asked to, to compete, and you know, the, the stadium was nearly empty. Uh, no one wanted to be in a public place after something like that, and you know you can you can definitely understand why not. So it just seems uh, you can't escape it. You know, I was in, in south of France in one of the most beautiful places in the world, and that happens. And then I'm in Las Vegas, where everyone goes to escape their you know their daily stresses, to have a good time, and watch a show or gamble or whichever. Um, everyone goes for different reasons, but it's all to have a good time and. You know, you just, we just can't seem to seem to escape the madness, and it's uh, it's, it's it's just terrible. I, I said it on my Facebook earlier that um, I, I don't think people, I don't think the world can can necessarily change because it's in human nature to, to fight one another and for one group to not like another. It's tribal instincts, and we, we have these things ingrained in us. Uh, so change is the wrong word. I think we need to evolve past uh, our human nature and uh, and that's just something that's going to have to happen if we're going to to have a long existence in this in this universe because we could very easily wipe each other off the face of this planet right now um especially with some of the talks from some of the leadership around the world so uh we just we need to evolve we don't need to change because we can't change it's in our dna but we do need to evolve